The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall, celebrant of these somewhat ominous ceremonies. We are told when there is no law, there is no transgression. But the fact is, there is never the complete absence of law. Even where you have nothing, you still have law. A vacuum is absolutely nothing, isn't it? And yet, isn't it subject to a host of scientific laws, rules, standards? The point to all this? There are so many regulations, known and unknown, that govern our lives, that everybody has to be doing something wrong. Sometime. Somehow. Somewhere. The question is... Of what are you guilty? I can't help you if you don't tell me the truth. I am telling the truth, Doctor. Now tell me what is really bothering I, you. I, I don't know what's bothering me. Why do you feel frightened? I don't know. I, I'm i afraid of something. What? I don't know, Doctor. You have to help me. I can't. Because you lie to me. You say you are a stockbroker? That's the truth. Then why do you carry a gun? You have a small automatic in a special leg holster below your knee. Uh, Mr. Carpenter, are you now ready to tell the facts that you lied about, glossed over, or left out the first time? Our mystery drama, The Aliens, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Paul Hecht. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Man, arrogant, reckless, strides this earth as if he owns it, despoiling, destroying abusing and wasting nature's bounty for his convenience and pleasure. But does man actually own this earth? Man, with his intelligence, had made himself the swiftest and strongest of all the living things on this planet. But it is written, the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. It is 7.30 in the morning. John Carpenter, Jr., is having breakfast. What, what was that? Oh, will you look what I did? I dropped the big platter. Well, you should be more careful. Well, it would have to be the one Aunt Maud gave Why us. can't you pay attention to what you're doing? All right. All right. What is this? For the past week, you've been snap... I should say snarling at me like some neurotic wolverine. Well, I... I, I I'm... You're... You're what? Nothing. I'm all right. <laughs> this particular plate... You never liked it. For that matter, you're not unusually fond of Aunt Maud either. So what's all the fussing about? Is there any more coffee? Not for you. You mean no more coffee for me? I'll tell you why. Just listen to yourself. What's wrong with me? You're very nervous. Me? Nervous? You're irritable, <laughs> agitated, restless. Ah, that's nonsense. Something's simmering inside you. Anything seems to trigger an explosion. All I did was drop a dish and... You'd think a bomb had gone off. Uh, look, I'm going to miss my train. Three no trunks. Well, what is that supposed to mean, Louise? That's the shutout bid. And that's your way of saying the discussion is over. Look, Louise, it's 7.30. And you have half an hour to get to the station, and it only takes seven minutes. I like to get there early. Yes. That's what you like. What you don't like is to discuss a matter of the utmost importance. Your health, John. You're not well. There is nothing wrong with me. Ask Dr. Marks. I saw him less than two weeks ago. Then why are you losing weight? And why don't you sleep nights? Oh, now I am going to be late. 
John, can't you tell me what's wrong? I don't know. Then you admit Nothing that... is wrong, Louise. Nothing. Can you be home early tonight? We're having the Swansons for dinner and bridge. Oh, for crying out loud. It's Jim and Marge, and you love them both. All right, all right. John, see a doctor. I have already seen Dr. Marks. Now, how many times do... Why I... don't you see someone about... about your nerves? You mean a psychiatrist? Yes, you have a problem. Well, in the first place, I do not have a problem. In the second place, there's nothing wrong with me. And in the third place, I will not see a psychiatrist. I uh, want to thank you, Dr. Byrne, for seeing me without an appointment. You said it was an emergency, Mr. Uh, Mr. Smith. Uh, John Smith. Your age? 37. Married? Yeah. Children? And uh, None. Well, we... We uh, had a little boy, but uh, he died uh, in an accident. Uh, look, I, I don't know what's the matter with me, doctor. I'm edgy, f fidgety. I blow up at trifles. There may be some systemic disorder. No, I had a complete checkup. Less than two weeks ago, the doctor found nothing. You told him about these symptoms? Yeah, yeah. He told me I was in excellent shape uh, physically, but um, maybe I was <laughs> working too hard. Are you? Well, no more than usual. What do you do for a living, Mr. Smith? Oh, I'm a stockbroker. Why did you pause when you answered? Are you telling me the truth? What do you mean? That doesn't answer my question. Of course I'm telling you the truth. Do you dislike your profession? Certainly not. What, what kind of a question is that? It's the kind of question you're paying me to ask. Uh, yeah, I'm <laughs> sorry. Well, that was stupid of me. But you see now how I react to people. Are you under any unusual pressures? No. What are you concealing from me, Mr. Smith? What makes you think I'm concealing anything? Try to describe the way you feel. I've already told you. Nervous. And you can't account for it. No problems at your office? No, none. At home? No. If I were to ask your wife... What would she tell me? <laughs> She'd say I've suddenly become excitable, uh, apprehensive. Uh, two words there I would like to discuss. First, suddenly. This is something new? Yeah. Yeah, I've always been calm. I've had excellent self-control. I need that in my business. <laughs> oh, really? I know some highly excitable stockbrokers. Well, the second interesting word you used, apprehensive. Why are you apprehensive? Did I say apprehensive? Well, uh, it's all part of being nervous and uh, excitable, isn't it? No, not quite. Apprehensive suggests a feeling of foreboding, fear. Are you afraid of anything, Mr. Smith? Well, to tell you the truth, I... I am afraid of something. What? I don't know. You see, you keep asking these questions, and I have to keep answering, I don't know, because the truth is... I don't know. It's quite possible to be nervous without knowing why, but afraid. No. You must be afraid of someone. No, no one. Something. Well, you see, that, that's, what, that's what has me licked, Doctor. It's something unknown, something I can't name or describe. Can you help me? I don't think so. Why not? Because I know you're not telling me the whole truth. Doctor, I don't know what's bothering me. The you. whole truth about yourself. Huh. What's to tell? I'm a broker. I'm with uh, Valentine and Sterling. Uh, for example, why do you carry a gun? Uh, a gun? You have a small automatic in a special holster below your knee. Well, I, I... Because you're nervous and upset, you're being careless. That is why I was able to catch a glimpse of it, Mr. Uh, Smith. I would assume that a man who carries a gun in a leg holster is quite familiar with and adept in the use of firearms. Well, shall we begin again? Are you ready to tell me the truth this time? The truth? Tell me some facts about yourself that you left out, glossed over, or lied about the first time. Now, what is your name? What do you do for a living? 
And what do you think your problem is? Doctor, I am not free to tell you. Then, how can you expect me to treat you intelligently? I may have told you too much already. I... I I'm sorry, I I'd better go. <laughs> I'm afraid your battery's dead. Uh, yeah, I guess so. It was just perfect this morning. May I be of assistance? Oh, uh, could, could you help me jump start it? Sorry, I don't have those wires. Oh, that's okay. I got them. I see you're a man who prepares for emergencies. Well, you never can tell what... Now, what could have happened to my... Something wrong? What could have happened to the cables? I always keep them in the trunk. I know they were here. Well, may I give you a lift? Oh, no, no. Sorry, thanks. I can take a cab. Cab stand seems to be empty. Oh, uh, thanks. I'll, I'll call my wife, have her come down here to the station and pick me... Oh, no. I can't do that. Her car's in for service. Well, my offer is still good. Are you sure it's not an inconvenience? Not at all. Get into my car. Oh, you just saved my life. This is one night I can't afford to be late. My wife's best friends are coming to dinner. I understand. Oh, I, uh, I live at 19 uh, Cleveland Drive. I hope that isn't out of your way. Oh, no. I don't think I've, uh, don't think I've seen you before. You uh, live around here? Just visiting. Ah. Uh, my name is Carpenter. Uh, John Carpenter, Jr., to give it the full handle. How do you do? I'm Ivan Ivanovich Plutnik. Oh, you're, uh, you're not an American. I also have another name. Sasna. Sasna. I'm sure you've heard of it. In English, it means pine tree. Pine tree? Yes, pine tree. It's my code name. And it happens to be your code name, too. What do you know about pine tree? Here we are on opposite sides. Yet each of us finds himself on a similar project. Pine tree. Why are you reaching for your gun? If I wanted to kill, you'd be dead by now. All right. All right, what do you want? I don't know. You're a foreign agent? So are you. Both of us are secret agents. But <laughs> what's your purpose in revealing yourself? As far as revealing myself is concerned, your people know who I am. Just as my people know who you are. You have your cover as a stockbroker, I have my cover as a journalist. No one has taken in. Both sides allow it to continue. Why? Because we're not important, you and I. We're only small fish. But small fish are also necessary. They're part of the food chain. No, no, no. Never mind all that. Why have you personally approached me? No matter how many times you will ask me that question, I will have to give you the same answer. I don't know yet. You want a defect? Defect? Whatever for. Then... <laughs> Is it your purpose to get me to defect? I keep telling you I don't know my purpose. That's why I arranged for us to meet. You must have drained my battery. Yes. Why? I wanted us to talk. There's no one on my side I can talk to. Uh, well, I wouldn't know about that. There's no one on your side you can talk to either. That's not true. Why did you go to a psychiatrist today? How do you know I went to a psychiatrist? Why? You know so much, you tell me. You went because you're upset, nervous, and agitated. Well, that's no great feat of deduction. Obviously, I am on edge. And so am I. I hide it better. But for the past two weeks, I can't sleep. I'm just like you. I thought perhaps we could compare notes, help each other. Help each other? Why? We're enemies. I'm not your enemy right now. Come on, what do you think it's all about? It's your people against my people. I said right now, right now, it's you and me. We are still enemies. Yes, but we have the same problem. We don't even know what the problem is. I need your help. You need my help? Yes, and you need mine. I think Sasna is just a little bit ahead of Pine Tree. So I just happen to be a little more frightened. Look, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. It's the project that frightens both of us. Now, why? You can trust me. How do I know that? I'm trusting you. It's something terrifying, as if the whole world is about to be destroyed. Yeah. Yeah, I feel the same thing. Something that has nothing to do with my country, or your country, or any country. 
So I said to myself, why waste time fighting each other when we're faced with something that can destroy us both? Something that threatens to destroy us all. Now I know it. That's what I feel. That's what's being communicated to me. But what is it? Why? What is it, and why? You know by now, we have an orderly procedure. In the first act, we ask the question. It's only in the second act that you can hope for some of the answers. And yet, you already have a clue, an extremely powerful clue, that will enable you to answer the most important question of all. And what is that clue? It has been stated forcefully, and plainly, you think back on it until I return shortly with Act Two. Life for all of us is subject to certain rules and regulations. Whatever we do is performed according to the guidelines set by society. And yet, now and then, a man decides to break the mold. A Caesar crosses the Rubicon. A Nelson holds a telescope to a blind eye and says, I do not see the signal. A Gauguin leaves a life of the utmost Parisian respectability to become a beachcomber painter in the South Seas. And tonight, John Carpenter Jr. and Ivan Ivanovich Plotnik have also crossed the line. When did the fear start for you? Uh, the day I was assigned to the project. The same with me. Psychic communication. I didn't even know why I was put on it. I didn't either. My whole experience is in journalism. I always wanted to be a journalist, a reporter, a writer. What happened? Well, I went to college on a football scholarship. Uh, you know what that is? I think so. Yeah, I was so busy playing football, I had very little time to read. But I made all America. You know what that is? I'm not sure. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Anyhow, this brokerage firm offered me a job, and after a while I discovered the whole firm was a cover for a secret agency. Well, I stayed with it. You like it? Yeah, sure, it's interesting. What has your outfit discovered? Well, everybody knows the psychic communication among animals. Now we've discovered it exists among plant life. Yeah, and that's where we are. We're getting indications that even so-called non-living matter has a psychic system of communication. Well, maybe there's no such thing as non-living matter. Maybe all matter has some form of life. That's what's being told to me. How is it being told to you? How? Well, not in words. In thoughts? Not exactly. More by feelings. Feelings, yeah, that's right, that's right. Instead of understanding something, I, I just uh, feel it. It's as if it hasn't been told to your brain, but absorbed by your nerves. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly how it is. And I have received this feeling that the world is about to be taken over by by a force. An alien force. Aliens. Yes, aliens. Who are they? I don't know. But you do feel they're going to destroy us all. Yes, and that's why I'm frightened. And you feel the same way. Did you try to tell anyone on Pine Tree? <laughs> I started to, and I could see from the looks I was getting, no one had the vaguest idea of what I was talking about. When I started to talk about it, I also got looks. So I dropped it. Pine Tree and Sasna. Why are you and I the only ones who feel this fear? Maybe we're the only ones who are psychically susceptible. <laughs> I'm really the most down-to-earth, practical guy I know. So am I. Jeez, I, I often wondered... How do you fellows handle your wives, huh? Mine thinks I'm a journalist. Yours? Huh. She thinks I'm a stockbroker. The aliens, if that's what they are, could they be from another world? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That's all I keep saying these days. I don't know. I don't know. Ivan, what are we going to do? Well, you and I, we've taken the first step. John, 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 wake up. Cut it out. Cut it out. John. What? Oh, oh Louise. Oh, what's wrong? You were having a nightmare. Nightmare? 
Oh, no, that's impossible. I'm telling you. It can't you were... be. I was sleeping very, very quietly. No. You were howling and shouting. If I were having a nightmare, I would know about it, wouldn't I? I'm telling you. I was you... howling and shouting. What was I saying? I I don't know. It it was a kind of funny shouting. Funny? As as if there was a pattern to it. What does that mean? As if you were talking in, in some kind of new language. Oh, Louise. I'm... Oh, John. What's wrong? I... I can't tell you. That means that there is something wrong. Darling, please don't ask me questions. John, I have the right to know. Yes, yes, you do have the right, but please, just now, don't insist on it. The best way. The only way you can help me is to let me alone. Are you busy, Mr. Brady? No, oh, come in, John. Sit down. I, uh, I haven't slept in the last two nights. Anything wrong? Yes. I've wrestled with this, but I don't know any other way to handle it. I've been exchanging information with an agent from the other side. Now, John... You're going to ask me how, when, why, and... Well, it's not that simple. Okay, uh, well, to begin with, they... They also have a top-secret psychic communication project. Well, that's to be expected. It's called Sasna. Sasna? Yeah, yeah, it's their word for pine tree. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Or is it a coincidence? Continue. There's something about this project that we're on that terrifies me. Why? I... I have a feeling that... It's a feeling of approaching disaster. I, I know that sounds melodramatic, but I feel it. The agent from the other side, he approached me because... He feels it, too. The agent's name? Ivan Ivanovich Plotnik. And? Well, that's... that's it. What'd you tell him? He told me as much as I told him, and, well, we're both at about the same stage on the project. He approached you because he feels his fear? His terror. You believe him? Yes, I do, because I know he can't talk to any of his own people any more than, than I can talk to any of my own people. Now, wait a minute. You can talk to me, John. Well, not really, Mr. Brady. You don't seem to understand what I'm saying. I do. I understand you're afraid. But you don't feel it. You don't feel frightened by some terrible alien thing that will soon destroy the world. Alien? Alien in the sense of foreigners? An alien force. Out of this planet? I... I think so. John... Yeah, I know. I... You're going to tell me I'm working too hard, that I need a rest. Uh, this agent... His cover? Journalist. To whom else have you spoken about your fears? Well, I, my wife. What have you said to her? Nothing. She keeps telling me I have to do something, see a doctor. Uh, have you? Oh, yes, yes. What's his name? I didn't tell him anything. Even so? His name is Byrne. All right, about the agent. Keep seeing him and report the results of each visit. Yes, sir. String along with him, but be careful. As you know by now, this is a dangerous business, and everyone engaged in it is dangerous. I trust him. Why? <laughs> Again, you'll think I'm crazy. Because I don't get any feelings of fear or mistrust when he's around. Well, that's hardly Sir, a... Sir, we are engaged on a project that is investigating the nature and possible uses of psychic communication. And so some of us may be more prone to, to psychic disturbances... Would you like me to take you off the project? You can't. Why can't I? Because only people like me belong on that project. Susceptible people like me. All right, John. But be careful. Very careful. Ivan! Over here. I came as soon as I received your message. My message? Do you realize what you're saying? Yes. Yes, you sent a message. Not through a wire, not through an airwave, not on a paper. My brain to yours. How did you send it? How did you receive it? I don't know. I, it just happened. This thing, this, this force, it's entering into us. What we have just done, you and I, this is a revolution. But how do we explain it? I don't know. I... 
I think there's a kind of central communication system and that anyone who knows how can hook into it. I feel that. But I also feel pain. Yeah. Something, something hurts. Do you feel it? Wait, wait. Yeah, yes, I do. I feel as, as if I'm on fire. Ivan. Listen. What's that? Something's trying to reach me. It's saying something. The pain. Is it saying something to you, too? I don't know. The pain. Try to understand. I know only one thing, an alien force invading the Earth. Try to understand. We must fight it. Your people, my people, we must fight it together. I, I feel, I feel something else. We must go back together. Report back together. Tell them, warn them, the aliens. Yes, yes, the aliens. Ivan, Ivan, something about the aliens. We must fight them. Ivan, it is reaching me. An alien force is destroying the Earth. Is it too late? It is not too late. An attack. No. No, a counterattack is being ready. Counterattack? Against the aliens. Then our superiors do know. I feel the understanding now. We are preparing an attack against the aliens. I understand. Who is preparing the counterattack? Who? We are. We? Who are we? Your government. My government. Evidently, in secret, they've been working together. And they have prepared. Uh, listen. Listen with all your nerves. That is not what's happening. The message we're getting is not coming from human beings. Try to understand. Then who? Who is sending the message? It is saying the aliens must be destroyed if we are to save the world. I think I understand. What? I know who the aliens are, Ivan. I know. Who? Tell me. Don't you hear? Don't you hear? Yes. True. Yes, it is. It is. We are the aliens. We, the human race, are the aliens. We are the aliens. We, the human race. That's quite a discovery for an intelligence operative. Although, to tell the truth, such a thing has been suspected by many people for many years. But why has it become so apparent to John Carpenter and Ivan Plotnik? As I told you, the basic clue was handed to you back in the middle of Act One. And it has even been repeated. Well, I suppose many of you will just have to wait for Act Three. The following... Nothing human is alien to me, said the Roman poet Terence. However, here we seem to have a situation where everything human seems alien to something else. John Carpenter Jr., a secret agent, seems to have blundered into the most dangerous secret in the world. And the problem is, what can he do about it? We? We are the aliens? We are going to be destroyed. Why? By whom? Communicate with it, Ivan. Try to understand it. But there is so much pain. Yes, because it's new for us to think like this. It's not the way human beings think. By making pictures in the brain. This is communicating through changes of the body. You understand pain because you feel pain. Who? Who is talking to us? Oh, this isn't talking. It's transferring ideas. We are going to be destroyed unless... Unless what? Listen, Ivan. Help me try to understand. Unless we become part of... Of... The Earth. Yes. The Earth. But we are part of the Earth. We are not part of the Earth. We are not part of the chain. We will be destroyed. That's the message you've been getting. We will be destroyed. <laughs> 
Yes, sir. Now, here's what I suggest. We should meet with the members of their project, compare notes, and try to find a way to save ourselves. Now, John... Please try to understand. The whole human race can be wiped out. Uh... John, I know this is unorthodox, and there might even be hell to pay upstairs, but it's an emergency. Now, John, stop There is no time. All right. We'll do it this way. Bring in Ivan Ivanovich Plotnik. Yes, sir. Well, go ahead, call him. I have already notified him. What? Oh, yes. (laughs) You see... This is all part of it. Part of what? Part of our psychic communication. This is what our project was set up to discover. Plotnik and I already know how to use it. Now, the trouble is, in using it, we also learned other things. You see, because to use it, you sort of hook into a universal communication system and you hear what other things are thinking. Things? Yes. Yes, things, what we call inanimate objects, uh, stones, forces, Forces. gravity, uh, electricity, winds, clouds, everything that's part of the earth. I see. No, no, no. (laughs) No, you don't. You're treating me like a newcomer. Look, I've been in the service for 15 years. I know that technique, lead the poor fish on. Now, John, wait a minute. I want to help you. What help is there you can give me? The whole human race faces a holocaust. Why don't you bring Plotnik here and we can discuss it? No, because I see what's on your mind. Bring Ivan Plotnik here so you can arrest him. No, that's not why I want you to bring him here. Don't resort to lies, Mr. Brady. I won't do it. Even now, I'm warning him. Stay away, Ivan. Hide. Leave the country. I give you my word. He won't be harmed in any way. No, no, no. no. I've been around. I've seen solemn words and promises broken. In the light of... What's that again? Oh, yes, yes. A higher necessity. John, don't you see we're on to it? On to what? Whatever your game is. You want something. I don't know what it is. So you invent this science fiction horror story and this cooperative enemy agent. There's no such person. There is an agent named Ivan Ivanovich. Uh, All right, all right, John. It happens. I've seen it happen. It's almost the way it is in the armed forces. Uh, A man gets combat fatigue. There is nothing wrong with me. Our life is filled with constant pressure. It's hazardous. When was the last time you had a vacation? You placed me on this project. It was a mistake. And the project is a success. I have learned to communicate psychically with an agent from the other side John, you of keep... vital importance. We have discovered that the entire human race is in grave danger of extinction. How? I, 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 don't, I don't know that yet. But it will become clear. It will. Now, don't treat me as if I was some kind of a nut. Now, look, John, what happened to you happens to the best of us. A little rest... Yeah, in other words, you're going to put me away, huh? You need rest and treat... What if I refuse to go? I'm sorry, John. But you simply don't have that option. No. No, are you dead? Did they kill you? I need your help. Who's... Who's going to go to your people? Ivan! Ivan! Good morning. Remember me? Yeah. I'm Dr. Byrne. Mr. Brady asked me to come and talk to you. Yeah. 
I understand now why you didn't feel free to talk about your job. What do you want, Doctor? I want to help you. Nobody's going to listen to me. They may listen to you. We are about to be removed from the earth. We Human are... beings. By whom? I'm not, I'm not sure, but let us say by, by the elementary forces of the earth itself. Why? Because we are alien. We are alien to the rest of all the living creatures in this world. How? All right, look. There, there, there's a life cycle, a chain. We were not part of it. Yes, we are. No, no, no. You see, we are on earth. But we are no longer of it. We destroy other living things. They disappear. Whole species disappear. The chain is broken and we destroy other things. We are alien. And so we are to be destroyed in our turn. You believe this? Yes. This happened before. There was uh, the, the Ice Age, uh, glaciers, great floods, uh, upheavals. Why? The Earth had to rid itself of something foreign, something destructive. And now it's our turn. And how do you know all this? The Earth told me. How? I'm psychic. And so is Ivan. I could ask him to come here. Why? He'll back me up. If he comes, you won't give him away, will you? No, I promise. I'll send for him. How? I'm sending for him now. Right now, my mind can talk to his. Ivan Ivanovich Plotnik. Is that his name? He's answering me. He can come, Dr. Byrne. You promised me I could trust you. You can. Ivan, come to us. Come to us immediately. Well, where is he? He'll be here. It's a long trip. From where? He's been hiding out near the docks. Everybody's after him now. Our people want to arrest him. His own people. Yeah, John, you must face certain facts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I see where this is going to lead. I spoke with your wife. You have had disappointments in your life. You wanted to be a writer. That was a long time ago. You never forgot it. And that's why you're writing quite a story now. I don't think we have anything more to talk about. She told me about... Your little boy. She had no right to tell you about it that. It wasn't your fault. I was driving the car. An accident can happen to anyone. It happened to me. All these things build inside, and one day a man explodes. That has nothing to do with it. Look, our whole human race is in danger of being wiped out. Ivan will tell you the same thing. Well, where is he? He's here. Where? Don't you hear him? Just outside the door? Wait. Ivan. Hello, John. Come in, finally. Tell the doctor what we discovered. Who are you talking to? What do you mean, who am I talking to? Ivan. Where is he? Well, he's here, he's here right in front of you. Uh, tell him, tell him you're standing right in front of him. I'm standing in front of yeah. you, doctor. Yeah, you see? There's no one here but you and me. Uh, Ivan, tell him, uh, tell him about the aliens. What we found out, John and I, is that we are the aliens that we are to be expelled from the Earth. There, there. What do you, what do you, what do you, what do you think of what he said, huh? I didn't hear anyone say anything. Stop that! Don't make me think I'm crazy. Don't try to make me believe Ivan doesn't exist. Oh, no, on the contrary, John. Ivan does exist. Then why do you pretend you don't see him? Who do you think Ivan is, he John? He is, I told He is you. You are John Carpenter, Jr. Ivan is John. Ivan Ivanovich means John, the son of John, which is John, Jr. Plotnik is their word for Carpenter. John Carpenter, Jr. is Ivan Ivanovich Plotnik. You don't know what you're talking about. You created him. No, no. He approached me. He was in trouble. You would like to think that there's someone like you on the other side who is oh. in trouble, too. We have to cooperate. 
Both sides, all sides will be gone. Yvonne. Yes, John. Help me. John, there's no one here. Help me, Yvonne. We will make everyone listen to us. Help me get out of here. Wait, John. You can't leave. Help me, Yvonne. God. God, hurry. <laughs> John, John, please, darling. Try to cooperate with the doctors. They want to help you. Yes, Louise. We can still have a long and a happy life together. Of course, Louise. I'll um, come again tomorrow. Uh, yes, dear. Goodbye. Bye. Maybe... I should pretend to whatever it is they want. But I can't forgive them for killing Ivan when he tried to help me escape. They say Ivan isn't dead. But they try to humor people like me. I know he's dead. He doesn't come when I call him. And I no longer can communicate with the forces of the earth either. Ah, uh, doesn't matter. I know what happened. When Ivan died, I lost my psychic ability. But I know. I know that we are the aliens. And I know that sooner or later, each living human being will be removed from this earth. And he sits there in the sanitarium, and he makes the dire prediction you have just heard. And, of course, nobody believes him. But suppose, just suppose, it's true. Wilder things, weirder things have happened. In every prophet, isn't there a touch of madness? Therefore, the sanest thing you can do is wait for me to return in just a few moments. Flesh, blood, root, stem, leaf, trunk. We should go further and ask, what is life? Can't we say that one aspect of life is personality? Don't machines have personalities too? Don't they also at times seem contrary, out of sorts? And at others, don't they purr like satisfied kittens? The earth, the sea, the sky, don't they also seem to have their moods? As the philosopher says, there is only a single life force, and each thing in the world is a way of expressing it. Our cast included Paul Hecht, Mandel Kramer, Robert Dryden, and Marie Cheatham. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown, this is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. The preceding program was broadcast with the permission of the Columbia Broadcasting System.